Good morning. This is St. Stephen's Lutheran Church in Monona, Wisconsin. We welcome all of you on this windy and rainy morning, and we are glad to worship together. Good morning and welcome to St. Stephen's. It is so good to be back with you. I am Pastor Elisa uh, and I missed you last week. Um, and so we're already off to a roaring start as Rebecca is on vacation this week and we started right off with some technical difficulties. So thank you for your patience. Um, hopefully the rest of it will go smoothly. That is what our prayer is throughout this whole worship time. Anyway, just a few announcements that I would like to bring to your attention as we get started today. Um, first, please note that next Sunday, weather um, permitting, we will have a parking lot service with uh, communion. That'll be at 8.30, uh, as well as this 9.30 service with communion as well. So you can prepare your tables for next week. Um, we will plan to do the parking lot services and communion the second and fourth Sundays of each of our months until we can't anymore, until um, weather prohibits that. So um, you can keep that in mind and on your calendars. Also, we want to do a special worship. Uh, it'll be a picnic worship on September 20, uh, 20th in a couple of weeks, especially for our families, uh, those with children. We will be having a brief worship out on the lawn, bring a picnic lunch along, and uh, be able to share a meal and share worship with us on that day. Details to come. Uh, also, just note, this is just something that is really, um, something that I want to brag about a little bit, and just, I'm so proud of our congregation. Uh, we have, uh, the school kits have been put together and completed. 
we have had a banner year and a record for St. Stephen's. We put together 164 school kits that will go throughout the world um, to kids who need those resources uh, for their education and learning. So thank you so much for all of your support and the work. A special thanks to Barb Kepler and Joanne Esser and her grandchildren who really bought supplies and put all those bags and packed it up. Um, and so thank you and kudos to both of them as well. And finally, um, as I had mentioned, Rebecca's on a much needed vacation this weekend. Um, I will be uh, singing the hymns and the songs this week. And I really, I, I want to make a deal with you that you are gonna sing louder or louder than I do um, so that I know that you are with me um, in this. Uh, it's, it's a little bit out of my own comfort zone. So join me and let's uh, sing with gusto together. Promise on that one? I hope so. And now let us take this moment, take a deep breath, center our hearts and our minds as we be begin by confessing our sin that we may hear God's unconditional promise of forgiveness. Join me. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears our cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Join with me, with me now, as I said, for our Kyrie.
Lord God, enliven and preserve your church with your perpetual mercy. Without your help, we mortals will fail, remove far from us everything that is harmful, and let us toward all that gives life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now at this time, I would invite the children to come up a little closer and join me now, would you please? So today I brought with me a balloon, right? A green one to match the season here, if you happen to notice. Now I want you to just pretend with me for a moment that this balloon is a person, okay? And I want you to just think about every time I take a breath of air that I blow into this balloon, that um, those are actions and words that hurt people's feelings. So when I blow in, every time it's actions and words that hurts a person's feelings. So here we go. getting kind of toxic, isn't it? That's a lot of air. That's a lot of harsh language and hurt things. So how, what do you think will happen over time if I keep putting in those harmful words? Well, I think it probably will end up popping, right? And if you've ever seen a pop balloon before, you know that it then becomes and goes into pieces. Well, I bring this up today because uh, in today's story, Jesus is teaching his disciples how to talk with one another. And he really wants them to understand that if one person gets their feelings hurt, that they really need to go to one another and talk together and to listen to one another in order to be able to work it out. Because otherwise, if you just allow those feelings to just sit out there and be there over time, there's a brokenness that happens. Now we know that the balloon is not a person, obviously, right? So what does it look like, do you think? If Jesus' disciples pop, if they stop talking to each other, well, that's just it. They do stop talking to each other, then they stop working together. And if they stop working together, they stop being friends. And they stop doing their, um, to, and they go away from each other. And Jesus knows that it's so important for the community to stay together. And staying together and being friends together. And so Jesus wants his disciples to know that they must come to, together if they do get their feelings hurt. Because at the end of today's story, Jesus says that wherever um, People are gathering together, trying to work it out, trying to work together. Jesus is right there in our midst, in their midst. And that happens today as well. Jesus is right here with us as we do the hard work together as community. And when we get our feelings hurt, that we go to one another and work it out so that we can continue on in God's love and sharing that love with this world, because that's what it's all about. With that, would you please pray with me? And I'd invite you to pray an echo of response. Dear God, dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus, who teaches us, who teaches us how to stay and work together how to, to stay, stay and, and work, work together, together so we can better share so we can better share your love and healing with others your love and healing with others thank you and amen thank you amen and thank you for joining me today our first reading is from Ezekiel so you, mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. 
If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Now you, mortal, say to the house of Israel, thus you have said, our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways. For why will, why will you die, O house of Israel? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 119. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your teaching. I shall keep it with all my heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Incline my heart to your decrees, and not to unjust gain. Turn my eyes from beholding falsehood. Give me life in your way. Fulfill your promise to your servant, which is for you, for those who fear you. Turn away from, turn away the reproach that I dread, because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments. By your righteousness, enliven me. And our second reading is from Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from, earth, wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. 
But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by the Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This Gospel news, this good news that you just heard, includes with it an invitation. Right now, as you are, you can be a part of something, as specifically a member of the body of Christ. In the earliest and first congregations, the Apostle Paul is writing these long letters to these newly formed communities, clarifying what genuine community of the body of Christ looks like and acts like. As the values of the world in daily life pushes on them, tempting them to go another way while conflict arises. So in his letters, Paul writes of an ethic based on Christ's love. Like we hear today in the letter to the Roman church, the commandments, he says, are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfilling the law. You see, Paul knows that community life is essential and yet sometimes messy. And in to, again, today's gospel, Jesus offers this process when conflict, not if conflict, when conflict arises in the community. Not necessarily as a perfect blueprint of how to get along with others, but it does give insight on what drives a Christian faith community in times of inevitable disagreement. It follows, after all, the same pattern as what God has already done for us. We are to seek repentance, forgiveness, and reconciliation within the community as Jesus has shown us through the cross. That is what uh, a community founded in love works toward and looks like. You know, these days it seems like conflict can be found just about around every corner. And when conflict does arise, we cannot fall into that Midwestern nice. And you know what I'm talking about here meaning staying silent, bottling things up with the issues at hand while keeping a smile and pleasantry on our face. Or on the other side, divisiveness and contempt are now being shown more easily and readily through media, through social media. These are not following the way of Christ. They are aggressive, passive-aggressive, and at the same time, cowardly ways that tear apart communities and families. Jesus says, go to one another directly, but make clear it should be done in a way of love, and that invites reconciliation, repair. We do this through speaking as well as listening. Jesus encourages the church to be a community uh, that nurtures honest dialogue and refuses to keep silent in the face of behavior that harms others. 
It is so important to note here that our passage today comes soon after Jesus urges concern for the little ones. Those who are given the least power within the dominant community. Jesus focuses attention on their vulnerability by setting a child right in the middle of the disciples. And he proclaims that it would be better to be thrown into the sea with a millstone around one's neck than to place a stumbling block before such a one as this. It is a strong indictment against attitudes and practices that obstruct humans flourishing for all God's children. And just before our passage today, Jesus then connects these little ones to the parable of the sheep, where the shepherd leaves 99 in order to seek the one who has been led astray. Both teachings focus the church's attention on those who find themselves in a dangerous or vulnerable situation, often through no fault of their own. Therefore, the process of truth-telling and accountability taught in this passage is connected to the church's call to protect the disempowered and vulnerable ones, walking alongside um, in solidarity as they speak up or we speak up together sometimes. The world is in quite an upheaval. The church cannot stand utterly by, silent, or fall into the hate and division. The church, the body of Christ, has been given a call to bring compassion, forgiveness, and reconciliation into the world, to put love at the center of all social engagement, not fear, not power, not self-interest. You know, one place that I have experienced the church doing this at its best in my ministry and lifetime is when I went down um, and was a voting representative for the 2006, that feels like forever ago, 2006 ELCA Churchwide Assembly in Orlando. We were working at that time on controversial uh, resolutions that would allow LGBTQ plus clergy to serve while being in committed lifelong relationships, as well as blessing LGBTQ plus marriages in our church. It was difficult, but gratifying work. There were so many passionate people on all sides, but there was the sense that we were being led by a spirit of love. I have to say it was disappointing that these uh, didn't go through that particular year. But I was struck by the civil discourse that happened throughout the week. I had conversations with folks with different viewpoints over lunch and in the hallways. We had earnest conversation on the assembly floor, listening and talking together. Well, three years later, at the next assembly, these resolutions passed. Love and affirmation for a community that has suffered so much. And this work continues still. And currently, racism, which is a conflict that is centuries old, is percolating to the top of white consciousness over these last few months, especially since George Floyd's death and the continued violence that can happens. The church as a loving, forgiving, reconciling community cannot stay silent. I have been learning, listening, and reading how the white church has explicitly been a part of decisions that condoned and helped 
continue white supremacy and racism to thrive throughout these years. The ELCA Church Assembly brought it up to in community last year even. It seemed important, it was important to begin with confession and repentance to our African American siblings and work now to understand and advocate for those who have been so deeply harmed. For many people, let's be honest, it's easier to identify the ways that we have been harmed than it is to recognize the way that perhaps our actions can harm others, even if unintentionally. Perhaps this is one of the most difficult truths of this passage that Jesus teaches. You know, author Isabel Wilkerson in her new book, Cast, says, ignorance is no protection from the consequences of inaction. Whatever you are wishing away will gnaw at you until you gather the courage to face what you would rather not see. The global church has both an evangelical and missional task of which Jesus and then Paul are teaching the church communities throughout the ages. That task is for humanity to see ourselves in one another. And in to do this, God's people must first look for and grow in love. In other words, the church may never realize it's God's given potential until it learns to love others. Love, then, must be a lifestyle. We live and must live love, move and be molded and desired by love and to love. There was a Christian Century article just last month highlighting that the evangelical church in Germany bought a ship named Sea Watch 4. And this ship will aid migrants and asylum seekers attempting to cross the Mediterranean Sea into Europe. It's notorious for its rough waters that capsize boats. And there have been over 400 migrant deaths just this year. The church spokesperson made this statement. He said, as long as people seeking protection in the Mediterranean drown and government actions fail, we will do our utmost to support civilian rescue services. One does not let any single human drown. End of discussion. That is love and action. I mean, what if Christ-following communities evaluate our words, our actions, and the use of our time with the simple yet potent question, does this build up the body of Christ and nurture relationships or not? Can love be found here? This is not for the faint of heart. Yet Jesus promises that when we are about this work, that is, when we come together as a community to address our differences, resolve our disputes, seek to repair relationships, and stand with the vulnerable ones, Jesus is right there with us, always supporting, encouraging, blessing our efforts. We are not alone. And that's why we don't give up. Over these last months, it has been particularly a struggle as we have physically needed to be apart from our community, from one another physically. It brings unexpected challenges to be sure. And though our mission has certainly continued, I am missing you terribly. Being an authentic community of love takes courage and sacrifice in ways 
that I couldn't have imagined. And yet, in this time of separation, division, sickness, violence, let us together cling to Christ Jesus, who is with us, who formed this community around his message and cross of love, forgiveness, and redemption. Let us dare to be then a beacon of love shining forth in this world. Amen. Join me in singing now our hymn of the day. Let us continue by confessing our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together by the compassion of God, despite our distance, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Unite your church, O God. Give us, give to all the baptized the gifts of repentance and reconciliation. Strengthen ecumenical partnership and interracial cooperation among the churches. Guide the work of the Lutheran World Federation and the World Council of churches. Protect your creation, O oh God. Teach us ways to live that do not harm what you have entrusted to our care. Give to the animals the habitat they need for life. Renew and enliven places suffering from drought, flood, storms, or pollution.
Bless the nations, O God. Frustrate the designs of dictators. Give to the military a clear and moral purpose. Guide legislators, civil servants, judges, and police toward the well-being of all. Infuse the coming election season with honesty and integrity. Sustain us in our work, O oh God, and give employment to those who need it. Shape societies to ensure fair treatment for all who labor. Help us to love our neighbors in and through our work. Guide our civil discourse, O oh God. Alert us to social evils and show our nation how to end the patterns of racial injustice. Accompany all who are endeavoring to bring about a renewed society. Curb the violence in our cities. Tend to all in need, O oh God. Assist all friends and family members who are seeking restored relationships. Give community to the lonely and welcome to the outcast. Shelter all who are vulnerable in body, mind, or spirit, especially those we name here before you. Christy, Ernie, Norm, John, Mary Nervig's mom, Arlene, Tom, Dan, Bev, Mike, and for the continued settling in of Pastor Larry's brother, John. Receive once again, O oh God, our plea for the end of the coronavirus. Comfort those afflicted with COVID-19 and uphold our medical workers. Give youth a sense of responsibility for others and provide the world a vaccine. And hear each one, each one of us, O oh God, as we pray now for ourselves. We remember with thanksgiving those who have died in faith. As you equipped them, equip us with your protection and power until with them we see your salvation. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us take this time and share Christ's peace with one another through the live feed. Share an emoji, share uh, the word peace. Um, but let us know that one another, we are together in this time. And as you are doing that, I would just like to give a brief word of thanks again for all of those who continue to um, give to St. Stephen's Mission through your financial offerings and through the work that you continue to be about of your time and your talent. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we continue as the church, as Christ's body, together. Now let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things, through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in caring for the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And just a quick word before our blessing today. Again, thank you for your patience. I hope you're still out there <laughs> um, and that this is continuing on. I want to give a thanks to David, um, my David, David Reinhardt, for helping out and being uh, the, the tech person today. And thank you, Tim, for all the extra work um, and his adaptability that is so incredible through this as well. So um, thank you. And now receive the blessing. Mother and God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Final hymn, Go My Children with My Blessing. Go in peace, dare to be a beacon of love. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us on this day. Peace be with you and have a good week.